Okay, so hey guys, it's PSL here, and I'm here for part 38. Wow, this has been a long series, but yeah, I'm here for part 38 of the F1 Manager, Minardi Manager career mode. And so far, this 2001 season hasn't got off to an amazing start. I'm again quite um, pissed off at the end of the last episode after the double retirement, which was stupid. And um, Actually, I remember to replace the broken parts on the cars in a second. As you can see, Hackenden is six points behind Michael Schumacher at the minute and is level with Patrick Lamarie. So, we're in an interesting position at the minute, and Coulthard's still to get off the mark in terms of points. Um, and then in the Constructors, uh, which we're behind BAR, but then again BAR are actually very strong this year. Um, and again, six points behind Fry, because Frensen hasn't actually contributed to the points total, seemingly. No, Frensen hasn't scored any points for Ferrari so far. Um, but... Hopefully, last um, well, the last two races were just unlucky. Hopefully, we can rectify that as we're at the team's second home race for this episode, Imola. I'm looking forward to it. We've got to get some news out of the way first, and I'm just going to replace the broken barge boards on Hackenden's car. I'll okay. I'll, I'll worry about that in a second. I'll worry about that later. Let's see if there's any news. Okay, so we have got some news actually. Well, I just had to reapply the Red Bull sponsorship. Ross Bourne is telling us there's a test day going on, which I'm not even slightly fussed about going to. Where even is it? That's Catalonia. We've already been to Catalonia. Why do we need to go again? I don't know, but um, that's that. I'm not going to go. And Christopher Gardner wants to make some more Minardi merchandise um, posters. So finally, finally we're going to have people having posters of the legendary Minardi Mercedes in their room so let's well let's accept that because who wouldn't want a poster of a Minardi in their room I I haven't got one but I would definitely consider a Minardi poster if just if well, let's accept that it's gonna give us some more money anyway um, so what merchandise have we got so we got Minardi t-shirts being made Minardi um, hold all bags uh, Minardi posters now, and Minardi mugs. That's it, because I've said it on the Guide to F1 Manager video, but if you're McLaren or Ferrari, you get way more of these merchandise offers. You get way more instantly. And you could do really badly at Ferrari, and you still get loads. Or you can do amazing at Minardi like we are, and, well, we got four offers. It's just... It's it's one of these flaws that's in the game, it's ingrained into it, and I think it's something that commercial managers are supposed to solve, but they don't. So, well, there you go. Um, but yeah, we got some Minardi merchandise, as I said, Minardi posters, fantastic. Who wouldn't want a Minardi poster? And, well, yeah, let's see if there's any more news. Okay, so we have got some news, obviously Red Bull staying committed to us. But we've got a component still for Jordan and for BAR, so let's start with Jordan. I, I can't even put into words. Jo Eddie Jordan is clearly off of his face because he still hasn't worked out that Ford ZTEC engines are not good. Because he started off with Mugen Hondas in 99. Brilliant engines, Mugen Hondas. Then he had to get Ford ZTECs, they're rubbish, and then he decided to renew them again this year, and they're still rubbish, but he still wants to use them for a third consecutive year. What's the point? Well, we, well Jordan, we know, are going to be uncompetitive next year now. That's basically confirmed. So, well done, Eddie Jordan. What about BAR? Visti and Electronics. Okay, well, enough, that's not an amazing deal. Uh, but, because, you know, you can get M Magneti Morelli electronics, which are better, but, well, it's, it's, well, I mean, VAR, they, they start off in 99 as the richest team, so they could afford some decent electronics, you'd assume, but apparently not. Okay, and now we've got a new component still for Benetton, so let's find out what this is. Honda PGM electronics, again, not the best electronics, but... I mean, I don't know why all the teams don't just have Magneti Morelli Electronics, because 
electronics are so cheap. Look, fifty-three thousand dollars. I mean, the engines cost around twenty million. So I don't see why all the teams don't just get Magneti Morellis anyway. It seems quite logical to me, but regardless, Benetton have got Honda PGMs next year, which isn't the best, but I don't believe they're the worst. Actually, I think Vistians might be worse, but don't quote me on it. I'm not 100% uh, certain on that. But yeah, let's see if um, there's any more news. Okay, so Neil Oatley has designed some new suspensions and side pods, and... Neil Oatley's, I'm, I've said it time and time this year, and last year I mentioned it all the time, but Neil Oatley is such a brilliant designer, he's just constantly creating new parts. Okay, let's start manufacturing the old unit and start making a new one. And even Ross Braun, obviously our new technical director, I don't think he has the manufacturing capability to make these new suspensions and side pods. Um, in time for the race and time for the San Marino Grand Prix. New components deal for Prost, so we're getting lots of components deals announced here um, this episode. So look what's going on here. Brembo brakes are Prost, okay so they're using the worst brakes they can get, so that's quite illogical. I don't know what well it's not I don't know why they get the worst brakes, but fair enough. I mean Ferrari won last year's Drivers and Constructors Championship comfortably while using Brembo brakes, so I don't think brakes are that compi uh, that key of a component in comparison to others, but why Prost don't get better brakes is beyond me, but there you go. Right, okay, so AP Racing brakes are rumoured to be fitted on the Williams car next year, but we've got a component still for BAR, another one in fact, BAR. BAR in this game always seem to be one of um, the team that confirms their component deals very quickly. I don't know why, it's just a trait of their management. MR breaks, okay, so the joint best breaks, so they, they're going to have at least decent breaks next year. So that's good for BAR, the joint best breaks they're going to be using next year. And, well, that's really good for them um, and their competitiveness for next year. And I think we're nearly at um, the San Marino Grand Prix. I think it's nearly time for that to start. As you can see the bank balance has been reduced because I've had to pay everybody's monthly wages and etc. Um, AP Racing Brakes are also rumoured to be on the McLaren but no confirmation as of yet and I think we're literally a day or two off of having to head out. Oh no co new components deal for Williams. This could be the AP Racing Brakes I believe they were rumoured to use. And it is, so the rumours were correct, as they quite often are in this game. Sometimes they're not, actually, but quite often the rumours are correct. And there you go, Williams are going to be using AP Racing Brakes next year. So again, Williams, in terms of brakes, are going to be quite competitive. That, okay, so they're going to have a, comp uh, a competitive aspect of their car, and it will be the brakes. So that's good for Williams. And... Okay, so Magneti Morelli have sent us the fifth model of electronics, and AP Racing have sent us the fifth model of brakes, just in time for the San Marino Grand Prix. So that is good. So we've got we've got a car upgrade in time for the new Grand Prix. So the car has improved in both the electronics and brakes since the last Grand Prix. Need to remember to uh, fit new barge boards onto both Coulthard and Hakkinen's car. Let's find out has. Uh, Ross Braun been able to manufacture enough of the new suspensions and side pods? No, only three. And we need four, because two for practice and qualifying, and, well, you know, one for Hacken and one for Coulthard for practice and qualifying, and then another one for Hacken and Coulthard for the race. So that is unfortunate. We won't be able to use that component in time for the race, unfortunately. Um, well, this race, but for the Monaco Grand Prix, they will be on the car, so that is some good news. But yeah, the San Marino Grand Prix, Imola, and what what an epic race this has been for us. Our first points were scored at Imola back in 99. Our first race win was happened at Imola in 2000. So many firsts have happened at Imola, and we've already had a race win. Can we have our first Minardi 1-2 at Imola? It nearly happened at Monza last year. It's nearly happened twice this season. Can it happen here? Third time around this season. Can it happen at the team's second home race? But crucially, the race which has historically 
been the kindest to us. Can we get a 1-2 here? And then it will be a trio of firsts for this team in terms of my ma my management with the team. That will be phenomenal if we can get a 1-2 here. And so, it's been a fantastic race for us. That's why I love this track so much. And this Grand Prix, purely because it's been so kind to us over the years. And so, I'm really looking forward to this race. And, well, let's see how it goes. Well, this is certainly an interesting practice session. Let's start at the top. Hakkinen has again topped free practice, much like he did quite often in 99, and also has done um, this season as well. So, 2001 San Marino Grand Prix practice is Minardi first and second, and then Ferrari third with Michael Schumacher in third, David Coulthard in second, quite a few, uh, few temps off of Mika Hakkinen, but... The gap between Coulthard and Schumacher is bigger than the gap between Coulthard and Hakkinen, and Schumacher's a second a lap off of Coulthard, so that's quite worrying for Schumacher and the Ferrari um, this race, especially as this race has got a high attrition rate, and Schumacher could easily not finish this race. It's quite often been the case where lots of the lots of the cars, you know, lots of the top teams don't often finish this race because so many cars go out so it's entirely possible that Michael Schumacher won't score any points this race and it'll be unfortunate for the San Marinian I don't know if that's a correct I don't know if that's a proper term San Marinian I guess it would be um that'd be quite unfortunate for the San Marinian crowd the Tifosi to see Michael Schumacher go out but both Minardis I'm sure they'll be happy with that um Villeneuve fourth which is Good for McLaren, um, especially when Eddie Irvine is down in last. I have no idea why Irvine's down there. Um, and he, it's not like he just did an outlap. He did eight laps at least, it says. So, why he's 1.6 seconds off of Olivier Panis is beyond me. Um, any other interesting results? Frentzen's down in 12th, which is quite, it's quite worrying for him, but... As we've seen in the past two races, Frenson's really slow in practice, and then, and then he's able to up his pace in time for qualifying. In the race, he seems to be nowhere again, but... I don't know, Frenson's been a bit off so far this season, but he's been good in the past couple of seasons. We'll have to see um, how that develops. Lamarie, again, has qualified ahead of Fizzy... or no, not qualified. He's finished ahead of Fizzy Keller in practice. Um, again, Stephen Watson, the other rookie, doing very well. He's ahead of Ralph Schumacher. Sarlo's in seventh. Really, it's quite an interesting practice session, but we'll have to see. I mean, these results mean nothing, essentially. It's qualifying, which actually has some weight to it. So, let's see what the qualifying results will be with the qualifying report. So qualifying here for the 2000 San Marino Grand Prix has just ended and it wasn't without some drama so let's go through it right now. Lining up on pole position for the San Marino Grand Prix is Mika Hakkinen in the Minardi. Now this will be bittersweet for the home crowd as while well, Mika Hakkinen was a McLaren driver and thus rival to the Ferrari team which the Tifosi adore, with Mika Hakkinen now driving for the Fienza based Minardi team we may see some of the home crowd Tifosi start to like Mick Hakkinen more than they did a couple of years ago. And actually, if the Tifosi want to celebrate the race winner, then they need those past wounds to heal very quickly, as the car in second is David Coulthard, who is also a former McLaren driver, now driving for Minardi. 
In third place, we know it's someone that Tafosi will love to see win if he does win the race, is Michael Schumacher in the Ferrari, which obviously the Tafosi adore. Giancarlo Fisichella lines up in fourth to beat his highly impressive rookie teammate. Although Lamari isn't far off Fisichella, so we may see an intense rivalry between the two guys as the race goes on, but currently, Fisichella is just ahead of Lamari. Heinz Held Frensen is in fifth in the other Ferrari, who once again had a very slow practice session but then a very quick qualifying session, so we have no realistic idea of what his race pace will be tomorrow. The final guy in the top six is Patrick Lamari in the other BAR. The highly impressive rookie is doing very well even three races into the season at a track which has been notoriously difficult for cars and drivers to finish with its high attrition rate. Lamari was still able to stick it just about in the top six and not too far behind his teammates. Jacques Villeneuve is in seventh with Mika Salo, the former race winner here last year in the Minardi lines up in 8th. Eddie Irvine lines up 9th after improving massively from his woeful practice pace which saw him stone dead last of the practice timesheets. The other impressive rookie of Stephen Watson is just ahead of his more experienced teammate Ralph Schumacher as their 10th and 11th. Then it's both Jordans headed by Jarno Trulli with Damon Hill down in 14th 6 places off of his teammate. Pedro Diniz is 15th in the Sauber with both Benettons doing very poorly this session, with Barrichello 16th and Sarazan 17th. Olivier Penas will line up 18th with Jean Lacy in 19th. The back three are Zanardi in 20th, Marc Genet in 21st, who just about doesn't line up in last, which is probably thanks to his past experience with Minardi, and so the support he's naturally going to get from the home crowd. And because of that home support, Marc Genet was half a tenth quicker than the Sauber driver of Alexander Wurtz, who will line up last for tomorrow's race. Okay guys, so here we are on the race strategy screen. As you can see, Ross Braun, our new technical director, still only in his third race in his Minardi career, has recommended a two-stop strategy for today's race. We'll have to see how that pans out, um, and an interesting qualifying session with, well, lots of promise. I mean, we're definitely the quickest guys there. I mean, what are we, over two seconds a lap quicker than Michael Schumacher? Well, Coulthard's over two seconds a lap. I mean, Hakkinen's over three seconds. Hakkinen's almost four seconds a lap quicker than Michael Schumacher in qualifying. We should easily wrap this race up then. So, well, yeah, I've I've replaced the parts on the Minardis, done the race strategy. Let's see how the San Marino Grand Prix is going to play out. So, tell both of our guys to maintain position because we don't want them to crash into each other. Plus, also, while Michael Schumacher may jump us at the start, the Ferrari is so much slower than us at this track, especially. I don't think we need to worry about it. So Hakkinen has maintained his first place, Coulthard is in second, Schumacher still holding third, we've got Fizzy Kello is still in fourth, and then the other Ferrari of Frenson looks like he's going to make a move on the BAR, hasn't been able to do it, and was almost taken by Patrick Lamarie, of course, and actually, I'm watching these races with genuine interest and actually talent spotting, because for the first time this series, I'm looking for decent drivers, I haven't sorted out the contracts at any of my three drivers at the minute, so I'm definitely talent spotting here. Here's Jacques Villeneuve, who I think is too expensive for Paul Stoddart's taste, but he has done, well, much better than Eddie Irvine, so Eddie Irvine is a definite no-go, but also he is quite expensive, actually. Look, we're quite a way ahead of Schumacher, actually. There's a sizable gap already between Coulthard and... Uh, Michael Schumacher, um, Hakkinen's pulling out ever so slightly from uh, Coulthard. There's a Prost of, I don't know who actually, Zanardi I think, because there's Genet directly behind. Um, and and Lacey's ahead, so, okay, so, yeah, it, it is Zanardi. And Zanardi is in a arrow sandwich, okay. Um, well, is Zanardi going to get past a Lacey? We'll never know. But Jean Lacey's done very well in in the arrows this season. He's done so much better 
than Takaki did, De La Rosa did, um, Gene uh, is doing and has done. He's doing so much better. And we saw Jean, uh, Jean Alessi last year in the Benetton pale in comparison to David Coulthard. But this year, electric in that Arrows. Maybe not so much this race, but in the past two races, he was very, very quick. And now, look, we're pulling out miles. It's just several seconds a lap on Michael Schumacher. And we know we've had some car reliability issues. I may, midway into the race, especially if Schumacher retires... Um, tell my guys to ease off on the pace because I really want a Minardi 1-2. I've been waiting a long time for a Minardi 1-2. It'd be great if it happens in Imola. I mean, it nearly happened at Monza. That would have been even better if it happened at Monza, but not quite. But it'd be fantastic if it happens at Imola. Uh, Coulthard is already over 20 seconds ahead of Schumacher and Hakkinen is, well, 34 seconds ahead. We've got our first retirement this race, probably of many. It's Eddie Irvine with a driver error, and there you go. As if I needed more convincing not to get Eddie Irvine next year, there's proof. Um, but as I said, yeah, I'm actually talent spotting for the first time this series, and La Marie is definitely someone to consider. Um, Jean Lacy, just as I was singing his praises, he's crashed out with a driver error. Um, Hakkinen is calculating him, is calculating where Coulthard is now. Okay, that was interesting. I think they're going so fast, the timing screens couldn't physically keep up with where they are on the track. About the minute. Oh, we've had a couple more retirements. Mika Salo with an engine failure. Ralph Schumacher with some kind of fuel-related issue. Um, I don't know what that's all about. But Salo obviously won last year's race. And an engine failure, a Peugeot engine failure, that's gutting for Mika Salo. What about Damon Hill, our other former driver who came fourth here last year? I mean, he's down in 11th. He's not having a, stel um, a stellar race by any means. And now, Hakkinen... Well, no, even Coulthard is a minute, a minute ahead of Schumacher. Hakkinen's a minute and a half ahead. Coulthard is a minute ahead. A minute ahead of Schumacher. There's no competition. Frentzen, the other Ferrari's gone out with a driver error. So, there's no competition this race. Absolutely none. Unlike the other previous races where there was some competition from Schumacher, like he was relatively close, this race, absolutely none. We're pulling away rapidly. And Mark Genet has had a driver error, and obviously this is a good race for Arrows to score points. Uh, Schumacher's out of a suspension failure. Okay, Schumacher's retired. We've got such a big gap on everyone else. We may as well ease off, honestly. Um... I don't even know how far ahead we are of Fizzy Keller because it doesn't say. We're that far ahead, it just doesn't even say. And we want to minimise the chance of um, of a part failing. So, yeah, that's why I'm telling them to ease off, hopefully to improve reliability. And we could just go fast and mock the other, the other teams of how fast we are, but that's too risky. Uh, Damon Hill's retired of a bargeable failure. That's gutting. Obviously, he had a half-decent race here last year. Uh, Lama Rees out of a suspension failure. Zanardi's out of a bargeboard failure. Um, but yeah, going back to what I was going to say initially, um, it's a shame that Marc Genet's retired, because obviously, this is such a good race for Arrows to score points. It's such a good opportunity for Arrows to score points, especially as there's now currently eight runners left in the race. Fizzy Keller's out of a driver error. Watson's out of a driver failure. Um, and he was looking so promising so far this season. Um, but we know this track has a high attrition rate. Uh, Olivier Panis with a suspension failure. Deniz with a suspension failure. So, the only guys left in the race. Both of us guys. Both Minardi guys. Hacking and 43 seconds out of Coulthard. We should easily get a 1-2. Jacques Villeneuve. Done reasonably well this race in third. Then we got both Jordans, which were our rivals last year. What? At this time of the season, last year, they were stern rivals. And in this race, damn nearly took the race win off of us with Barrichello and Frentzen, obviously. That was when Frentzen was a good driver. Um, Sarazan in sixth. That would be fantastic. Sarazan ahead of Barrichello. Hmm, and we know Barrichello's not exactly a bad driver. And then Verts eight laps behind um, Hakkinen in eighth. And I want to see our guys come across the line. I want to see... The Minardi 1-2 happen. Where are our guys? Okay, Hakkinen is on his last lap. I don't want to miss it. I do not want to miss this. 
elusive, brilliant moment. Where is Sarazan? Okay, have we got another car that's retired? Yeah, Villeneuve has retired with an electronics failure. Only a few laps before the end. That is gutting. But Hakkinen, what a superstar he's been this season. He's had a couple of issues with car reliability, and so is Coulthard for that matter. But Hakkinen has been superb this race. He's been nearly a second a lap quicker than Coulthard. He's been just on form. This is this is why Hakkinen is a two times world champion and this is why he's deserving of winning his third world championship with us this season and we saw how good of a driver Hakkinen was in 99 because he had quite a few retirements in 99 with the McLaren but was still able to win the championship comfortably and it looks like it may be a similar story this season with Mika Hakkinen in the Minardi I don't know how happy the Tifosi will be about this but Mika Hakkinen is going to come across the line at San Marino in, well, San Marino Grand Prix, Imola, and he's going to win the 2001 San Marino Grand Prix. And hopefully he's going to lead a 1-2 ahead of David Coulthard. So Coulthard has just got a few corners left to go. He's, oh, he was a way off. Um, Mick Hackenden, all race, all Grand Prix weekend, all season so far. Even in 99, he was a way off Hackenden. We know Coulthard's a good driver, we saw it last year, just in that Benetton, he was so quick and much quicker than Jean Lacy. We know Coulthard is not a bad driver, but he's going to come across the line and take second. I don't know how happy he'll be about it, but he's finally got some points on the board as Coulthard. But he's going to come around the chicane and he's going to finish second and this means we've had our first ever Minardi 1-2. Well, that is fantastic. So, Coulthard in second place. Where is the man in third? That is Pedro de la Rosa. Wow, his career has progressed massively. There he is coming across the line. He's got some more laps left to do. But de la Rosa. I mean, he was... He, wow, his career has progressed a lot. We know in 99 he was way down the back of the field with us at Arrows. But now, look, he's going to get a podium. That would be phenomenal for de la Rosa. Trulli in fourth. I mean, De La Rosa's outpaced Trulli. Sarazan's outpaced Barrichello and Sarazan. This is the moment I've been looking for. Sarazan to get some points. And obviously, Sarazan, what? You're having a laugh. I was just about to say, I've been looking forward to this moment. Sarazan, who was a Minardi driver for one race for the 99 Brazilian Grand Prix. He was a Minardi driver. I wanted to see him finally score some points. In much the same way I wanted to see Genet score some points. And not, neither of those two have scored points so far. I mean, a suspension failure. Three laps before the end for Sarazan. That is cruel. That is absolutely cruel. But that does mean the race results for the San Marino Grand Prix in 2001. Mika Hakkinen won it comfortably, 44 seconds ahead of his teammate David Coulthard, who also was dominant this race, especially as we told him to ease off for the last 20 laps or so. Hakkinen finished 4 minutes ahead of third place man Pedro de la Rosa in the Jordan, and again it's that Minardi-Jordan rivalry, which we saw only at the start of last season. We saw it you know, around this time, we saw it in the 2000s. San Marino Grand Prix and they're right next to us again but this time we were able to beat them unlike in 2000 where they s we sandwiched them they got second and third this time we've been able to well and truly beat them this time De La Rosa third the other Jordan driver Yano Trulli fourth Rubens Barrichello Benetton in fifth place that's it should have been Sarazan's fifth place but that's not to say Barrichello doesn't deserve it Barrichello fifth place for the Benetton team Alexander Wurtz, three laps off finishing, took sixth. Very, very slow this race, and was very slow in qualifying. Obviously, lined up last in qualifying. That just shows. At tracks like Samari, at tracks like Imola, you can qualify last, but so many guys retire. Even when you qualify last and you go as slowly as Wurtz did, you can still scrape a point. Of course. Sarazan retired right near the end, so did Villeneuve, Fizikella did as well, although Fizikella was with a driver ever. But Villeneuve and Sarazan should have got those points. 
and didn't. And, well, that's how Wurtz was able to get his point. But I think that has opened my eyes. Obviously, as I said, I'm still talent spotting for drivers. Sarazan outpacing Barrichello. That is something I've got to keep in mind. I wasn't considering Sarazan as a driver. I am now. Actually, to be honest, I may as well openly... I actually will know. Let's go on to that in a second. Minardi dominate at San Marino, Imola. That's... That is the elusive message I've been waiting a long, long time to finally see. We've seen Minardi win at San Marino. Finally see Minardi dominate a race weekend. Pole position, fastest lap. Second place in qualifying, second place in the race. I mean, a 1-2 finish. Fastest in practice, second fastest in practice. Well, got 1-2 in practice, 1-2 in qualifying, 1-2 in the race. And fastest lap. I'm sure we must have got the fastest lap today. But, wow. Minardi dominates. I mean, that's... What can I say about that message? That is a perfect message. I mean, look. Everybody was ecstatic about the team's result. Ecstatic. That's that's how much this means. Obviously, it's the team's second home race. And, wow. What a finish this was for us. And race report... Don't particularly care. Oh, Ferrari are now really in the tech race. They, they've got the most advanced suspensions, barge boards, and side pods. So Ferrari have now overtaken BAR in the tech race. But of course, Ferrari do have Roy Brenner as their chief designer. So we would expect Ferrari to be slightly ahead of everyone else in the mid-season aero development race. They should be slightly ahead of even us. But of course, they've got a much worse chassis than we do. Um... Okay, that message. Stefano de Melicali. Oh, of course, we got tons of money this race. 1.6 million sponsorship revenue, 100 grand in merchandise, and 4.8 million prize money. That's what you get for coming first and second. 4.8 million prize money. Wow. Our bank balance is looking very good. Well, it's, it's less than when we started last month, but. Hopefully that should please Paul Stoddart. Anyway, Drivers' Championship. Mick Hakkinen is now leading the Drivers' Championship. Four points ahead of Michael Schumacher in second. Ten points ahead of Lamarie. And David Coulthard is fourth in the Drivers' Championship um, as it stands. Constructors' Championship. Finally, we're leading the Constructors' Championship comfortably. Ten points ahead of Ferrari. Four, uh, yeah, 14 points ahead of BAR. Obviously, both Ferrari and BAR didn't score any points this race. And so we've been able to pull away from them comfortably. And, yeah, as I said, I've been talent... Well, let's... Hang on. Before I get into that, manager ratings. By far and away, I'm the most highly rated manager. Craig Pollock um, for BAR, second highly most rated manager. Uh, where's Jean Todd? Right in the middle, okay. Well, I guess he didn't score any points this race. Well, Eddie Jordan, purely from getting third and fourth this um, this race... He's now rated the fourth best manager. But yeah, in terms of drivers, I'm thinking about getting, um, I'm contemplating getting, uh, Sarazan outpaced Barrichello today. We'll have to see how well that goes with him. See if he's all, we'll have to see if he is really that good or whether that was just a one-off. Mark Genet, I feel like he deserves a good chance. Obviously, he had a chance in 99, and Padoa proved himself to be better, but the difference is, is Genet's career hasn't progressed, unlike Padoa's did, where he was at Ferrari, so I do feel sorry for Genet. Salo easily deserves a seat at Minardi, easily. He was so good for us last year, easily deserves a seat. Uh, Lamarie, for being by far and away the most surprising driver I've ever seen in this game. Lamarie Definitely deserves a seat as well. And Luca Padoa, quickest in preseason testing this year and last year, he again deserves a seat in in the Minardi. Plus also the fact he did so well for us in '99. I just feel like he deserves a seat with us. But anyway, I'm going to decide the drivers I pick in time for the Marco Grand Prix. Well, once the Marco Grand Prix ends. I'm going to decide the drivers I want, because of course, Monaco is what separates the men from the boys in terms of drivers. You need good driving talent to get around here. 
So anybody who excels at the Monaco Grand Prix goes... I have to take massive consideration into signing. Because I've agreed my technical director, commercial manager contracts, which I'll announce later on. Um, the only the only contracts I haven't agreed at the minute are the engine contract, because Paul Stoddart's being very stubborn on that. Um, he doesn't really want Mercedes engines again. Um, and the driver contracts, both driver 1, 2 and test driver. So, need someone cheap, but someone good. And there's lots of cheap, good drivers out there. And, well, Monaco Grand Prix, the perfect opportunity to see who truly is a good driver. And it's going to be a fantastic Grand Prix anyway, because, of course, it is the Monaco Grand Prix. It's a fantastic race, and I'm massively looking forward to it. I mean, if we can get a 1-2 at Monaco as well, that would be amazing. That Think about the fame we'll get for a Minardi 1-2 at Monaco. That'd be amazing. Or even winning at Monaco, which we haven't done previous. Well, we haven't won at Monaco before. Even a win at Monaco would be fantastic. But yeah, um, I'm looking forward to that episode. There's going to be a fantastic one. And also, I need to watch out for any potential drivers to get next year. So, I hope you guys look forward to that race. I certainly am looking forward to it. And I'll see you guys for it. So, I'll see you then.